First at 5, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. The political revolution has begun and it will continue. It is day two of the Democratic National Convention and the party seems to be uniting, at least more so than yesterday. Good evening, it's Tuesday, July 26th. I'm Ryan Roberts. And I'm Renee Wilson. Thanks for joining us. We begin tonight with coverage of the Democratic National Convention. Our own Nestor Montoya is at the convention in Philadelphia. He says day one was a fairly rocky start for the Democrats, who showed a clear divide between Hillary and Bernie's supporters. But last night, Bernie Sanders took the stage and encouraged party unification. So today, the mood among delegates has shifted noticeably. Nestor filed this report earlier this afternoon, wrapping up day two of the Democratic National Convention. It's a new day at the DNC and the Democratic Party is more united. An obvious shift from the controversy that dominated just days before. That's all dissipated. It started dissipating last night. This morning at the Florida Delegate Breakfast, there were no longer the sound of boos, only cheers. It was a meeting that fed delegates with the principle of teamwork. We are stronger together and that we can carry these issues forward and work you know, collectively as a team, especially in Florida, which is a swing state. Party leaders spoke to delegates like House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and Florida Senator Bill Nelson. But the most talked about moment was the surprise appearance from Senator Bernie Sanders. He stressed the party's need to unify as one and get people involved and motivated to vote, a common theme shared by others. Uh, people have to see the value of their vote. And we must demonstrate to them that when, that when Democrats vote, Democrats win. There was also optimism for a Florida win in the general election, regardless of conservative victories in North Florida counties. South Florida will offset the North Florida vote, and it will be that area across the center of the state that will tip it to Hillary. It was clear that the DNC was in need of some TLC in preparation for tonight's roll call. Roll call is currently taking place on the floor, and later tonight there will be speeches, including one from former President Bill Clinton. Reporting from the DNC at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, I'm Nestor Montoya, WUFT News. And it isn't just the Democrats at the convention in Philadelphia. The Republican National Committee held a press conference there today to discuss Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party's foreign policy. Meanwhile, Donald Trump and Mike Pence were at the Veterans of Foreign Wars Convention in North Carolina today, speaking to veterans. That's just one day after Hillary Clinton did the same. Trump accused the presumptive Democratic nominee of downplaying the problems with the VA. We know how she takes care of the veterans. Just look at her invasion of Libya and her handling of Benghazi, a disaster. Or look at her emails, which put America's entire national security at risk. Lock her up! Lock her up! Trump announced his own 10-point plan to fix the VA, which included a provision to have a hotline directly to the White House. We'll have more political news later in the show with our political beat reporter, Morgan Reiner. We have some breaking news. Uh, this evening, and police officers in Gainesville rushed to respond to a bank robbery at a hospital today. That's right, Campus USA Credit Union has a branch inside UF Health Chance Hospital. UF Public Safety sent out alerts around 2 o'clock this afternoon, advising people to avoid the area. The Gainesville Police Department believes the suspect is William Kyle Rosignol, the same suspect in a robbery of the Wells Fargo Bank on the 13th Street last Thursday. Rosignol is described as a 5'9", 150-pound white male with a medium build wearing a black t-shirt with a skull logo and khaki shorts. They also say he may be armed. As an alert sent, at 4.30, GPD was still searching for the suspect. While the Gainesville Police Department is actively looking for the suspect out in the city area, we are continuing the crime scene investigation here at our site, along with investigators from the Gainesville Police Department. If anyone has any information about the whereabouts of the subject, please contact GPD or UFPD with tips. This is UPD's public information bulletin on William Resignol, which they sent out uh, just a few minutes ago. Again, they say Resignol is believed to be armed and dangerous. UPD asks that if you see Resignol, do not try to contact or detain him. Instead, call the police. Well, Renee, over the past few days, we've seen quite a few storms fire up at this time, and apparently today is no different. You have forecaster Lee Southwick is tracking some cells on radar right now. 
Let's check in with Lee in the Weather Center to see where these storms are heading. Lee? Well, I'm actually tracking some downpours on radar right now. They're very scattered though, and they're mostly east of I-75. They're scattered about because our sea breezes have not collided yet. We're expecting them to collide between the 301 highway and the St. Johns River Valley. So then we'll see some more storms start to fire up over the next couple of hours. But for right now, since there's not a lot of rain within the area, temperatures are staying very warm. These are your feels like temperatures, 101 in Gainesville and Jacksonville, 98 in Ocala. For your hour by hour this evening, we're dipping into the upper 70s by 10 p.m. Your rain chances will be over by midnight. Tomorrow will be another muggy morning in the lower to mid 70s. But coming up, I'm going to tell you more about our rain chances are decreasing over the next couple of days. Thanks, Lee. A semi-truck burst into flames earlier this morning on I-75 after hitting a guardrail. The accident happened between the Newberry Road and 39th Avenue exits on I-75 about 4.30 this morning. Investigators say the driver of the truck hit a guardrail along the edge of the road before the truck burst into flames. The northbound lanes of I-75 were closed for several hours this morning until the truck was removed. The driver and the passenger only received minor injuries. There's no word yet about what caused the accident. Flowers and candles now sit outside Club Blue in Fort Myers, where a shooter killed two and injured 18 Monday morning. Mourners gathered outside the club last night to honor the victims, and police say three people are in custody and officers are still searching for any others who may be involved. Authorities maintain the shooting was not an act of terrorism, but have not yet released the attacker's motives. And on your commute to work, you probably think the fewer traffic lights, the better. But in one part of Alachua County, people are beginning or begging for another one. James Fertil joins us with the explanation. In this case, people are worried about safety. The light will stop traffic on a busy highway, but people say that's the point. In Hawthorne, people are concerned that when the love truck stop is finished, accidents might increase. The truck stop is on Highway 301, a little north of State Road 20. Local leaders are asking the Florida Department of Transportation to add a traffic light. Just really need a stoplight. I'm begging them to put a stoplight in there. Ayunis Carroll owns a business across from the truck stop and says she's witnessed many accidents. In 2014, a man died when his car was hit by a semi. And there is concern that cars will come on suddenly on trucks that can only slowly get up to highway speed. My feelings on it that we need a stoplight out here is because there's already been so many wrecks right here in this area. And uh, I just feel like we need a stoplight. If not, a lot of people's going to get killed. We didn't get any response from FDOT today, but the locals tell us the agency's position so far that is, is that the location is too close to an existing light on State Road 20. James Fertil, WUFT News. Thanks, James. Recent violence around the globe has sparked questions about GPD's readiness for an emergency situation. And last night, community members had a chance to voice their concerns about public safety overall and the fear of police brutality. The Police Advisory Council sat down with community members at the Santa Fe Tech Center and fair treatment of minorities fueled the discussion. Some in attendance were more vocal about others, about how they've been treated by officers in the past and what they would have liked to see and change in the department. Officers say they take what the community says very seriously and they stress the importance of coming to these meetings and being heard. Uh, we can't uh, allow silence to take over the community. You know, if there is an issue, come and tell us because if there's silence, all it's going to do is build, tensions are going to build, and they're waiting for a flashpoint where something would happen and then that's when they express their dissatisfaction. As far as public safety goes, Chief Jones briefly touched on the addition of training programs for pastors in emergency situations, as well as the near future addition of more dash cams and body cameras. For his officers, Jones also says that the community input at these monthly meetings is the best way for existing problems to be solved. And Florida's first medical marijuana dispensary is officially open. A pre press conference ceremony celebrated True Leaves opening at 2 o'clock today in Tallahassee. True Leave and the dispensing organization for Northwest Florida Hackney Nursery received processing and dispensary authorization from the State Department of Health just last week. With the opening, patients suffering from cancer, epilepsy, chronic seizures, and chronic muscle spasms can order medical marijuana by contacting their physician, as long as they are both listed in the state registry. Right now, only 15 doctors in the state are registered.
4-H is the nation's largest youth development organization with more than 6 million participants. Celebrities including Julia Roberts, Al Gore, and Luke Bryan are all former members. Last night I got to spend some time with the Florida 4-H members and while they greeted a special guest who says her experience in the program helped her earn the title Miss America. 300 Florida 4-H members chanted and cheered last night at an event called 4-H University. 4-H University is held at the University of Florida for a week. Children have the opportunity to make new friends and focus on the program. We encourage young people to develop life skills and to develop workforce preparedness skills. Chris DeCubulus is an associate state 4-H program leader and says students will compete in demonstrations, speeches, and will take classes throughout the week. But last night was a highlight, and Miss America, Betty Cantrell, joined in on the fun. Cantrell was in 4-H for two years, and she attributes her public speaking abilities and community service to the program. 4-H uh, kind of gave me my first outlet to really show people what I'm capable of in uh, a friendly, you know, competition. Rose Ducanis serves as the state 4-H council president, and she says she's inspired by those who have come through the program. Seeing people who started out as 4-Hers themselves and who are now in the positions that they're in is a really awesome thing. In Cantrell's presentation, she shared some personal stories and her talent. We do what we can to develop them as young people and to put them on a trajectory to thrive, and I think that's the message that Miss America brought tonight to our young people. Cantrell says there is something for everyone. I'm giving them so many different outlets and options to be involved with. No matter what their talents or skills are, there is an outlet for them in 4-H. More than 230,000 young people in Florida are 4-H members. You can watch live streaming of events from 4-H University at 4-HUniversity.org. Coming up, we'll take a closer look at the political world. With Hillary taking the Democratic nomination, officials are still uncertain which way Bernie's supporters are leaning. And it was another dry day today on the University of Florida campus. We had a high of 95 degrees and we'll continue to stay dry over the next couple of days. Coming up, I'm going to tell you about some drier air that's moving in.